in the last few lessons, you learned that there are lots of different operating systems. But all operating systems perform the same basic functions. And then you learned that there are a ton of ways to input commands into computers. But most operating systems use the same or similar commands. At this point, it may seem like computers are all basically the same. And it would be a little disappointing if users, with all of our different needs and preferences, were forced to use computers in exactly the same ways all the time. Luckily, we don't have to use computers the same way. Every operating system includes settings, adjustable options, that we, the users, can change to fit our personal preferences. Many of these settings can even be necessary for users with disabilities. We call these types of settings accessibility features because they make computers fully accessible to anybody and everybody. In this lesson, you'll learn about many of these settings and accessibility features which ensure that almost anybody is able to use computers in a way that is most comfortable for them. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to identify a variety of settings available on modern operating systems and make changes to your computer's settings and accessibility features to make it easier for you to use. Let's get into it. In your computer's settings menu, there are a lot of different types of settings, so play around with them. I mean, not right now. You'll have plenty of opportunities throughout this lesson. You can change how your computer displays information by changing its display settings. In these settings, you can turn the screen's brightness down or up. Or you can change the size of the text and icons on screen, all for the purpose of making it easier for you to see what's going on. If images on your screen seem too blurry, you can increase the screen's resolution to improve image clarity. But the trade-off for a higher resolution is a slower computer, as it has to work harder to make those clearer images. Sometimes it's better to actually lower your display's resolution so your computer can run faster, but that's a topic for another day. Finally, some people find it easier to spread all their work across multiple screens. In your computer's display settings, you can turn this feature on and configure the displays to work together like they're actually one giant screen. While we're on the subject of personalized displays, what would you want your computer's background to be? Or what color scheme would you like your windows to have? What sounds do you want your computer making? You can change many of these things on most operating systems. Some operating systems have these settings all in one place, while others are spread across different menus. But if you can find them, it can be super fun to personalize your computer and truly make it feel like it's yours. Oh, I liked the old wallpaper better. There we go. If you want to personalize how your input and output devices interact with a computer, you can do that too. For instance, if your computer has a mouse or trackpad connected, you can change how your cursor looks on the screen or how quickly it moves. Every device has its own settings. Set up all your devices so they work exactly how you want them to. If your computer is driving up your electricity bills or the battery isn't lasting very long, you may want to take a look at its power settings. In the power settings, you can change things like your computer's sleep timer, which will put your computer into sleep mode when you aren't using it to save even more power. Or choosing between different power saving modes that balance energy consumption with high speed performance. You can also change your computer's privacy and security settings. Things like which apps are allowed to use your camera, whether your computer tracks your location, and even configuring your antivirus and firewall settings. That said, Please do not mess with these options unless you are supervised by somebody who knows what they are doing. 
One wrong move, and you might open yourself up to hackers or viruses. So yeah, being able to make objects on your screen bigger or smaller or change your background to different images, or make your cursor move faster around the screen, or make your computer go to sleep sooner are cool options. But there's a more important purpose to many of these options, as well as many others you may find while exploring your computer's settings. These are known as accessibility features because they make computers more accessible or user-friendly for people with disabilities who might find it difficult to use computers with only the default settings. Take the brightness setting, for instance. For most people, this just makes your screen easier to see when you're using it in the dark or on a sunny beach. But for people with very light sensitive eyes, a too bright screen could mean that they would be unable to use the computer at all. Having the ability to lower the brightness makes computers accessible for people with light sensitive eyes. Pause this video now and complete the section in your guided notes titled, An Alternate Perspective. Then continue the video when you've finished. Have you finished the activity? What ideas did you come up with for accommodating users with disabilities? Let's see how many of your ideas already exist on modern computers. Users with visual impairments might find computers difficult to use since the primary way computers output data is through a screen or monitor. Those with low vision can adjust the size of icons and text to appear larger on screen or use colors with higher contrast so objects are easier to distinguish from each other. Additionally, most operating systems have a magnifier feature which enlarges the section of the screen the cursor is pointing at. For people who are blind, the visual display may need to be converted into a different form entirely. Many operating systems have a built-in screen reader accessibility feature, which can read text that appears on screen or describe the objects on the screen out loud. If you connect a braille display to your computer, you can set it up to convert on-screen text and objects into braille descriptions. As far as entering inputs, People with visual disabilities can turn on accessibility features for voice commands and speech to text, or use keyboard shortcuts to move around the screen while the screen reader describes what's happening. Audio outputs aren't relied on quite as much as visual outputs, but think about all the little sounds your devices use to alert you to things like new messages or a low battery. For people who are hard of hearing, Missing these alerts can make it more difficult to use computers. So, there are lots of accessibility options designed to help. In your computer's settings and accessibility features, you can change notifications so that they visually show up on screen. Some operating systems even have options to make the device vibrate or flash the flashlight on your device. Try to ignore notifications then. Oh, oh. If you don't have captions on right now, try turning them on before you watch the rest of this video. There should be a button that says CC slash subtitles right around here somewhere. We use computers for a lot of audiovisual entertainment, movies and videos where dialogue and sound effects are kind of necessary to understand what's going on. Luckily, most movies and video websites, including ours, have a subtitle or closed captioning option. These allow you to read dialogue on the screen and closed captioning even lets you read descriptions of sound effects too. For people with physical disabilities, using physical input devices may not be an option. So there are accessibility features that allow different ways of inputting commands. For those who can't use a physical keyboard, most computers have a virtual keyboard accessibility feature that you can type on by moving the on-screen cursor. For those who can't use a hand mouse to move the cursor, there are lots of alternative input devices like joysticks and foot mice or completely non-physical input devices like eye trackers or voice commands. Each of these additional input devices will have its own configuration menu to set it just the way you like it. The good thing about settings and accessibility features is that they're available for anybody. You don't have to have a disability to use them if you find them helpful. 
We're all different, and so are our preferences and needs as computer users. Pull up the settings on your favorite computing device, whether it's a traditional computer, a phone, a tablet, or even a game console, and see what settings and accessibility features are available to you. You previously learned that one of the important functions of operating systems is providing a file management system. But the computer won't actually organize your files for you. You have to do that part yourself. In the next lesson, you'll learn how important it is to organize your folders and files efficiently, and I'll demonstrate some common filing systems people use on their computers. Until then, remember, your brain is the smartest computer you'll ever have, so keep it charged and never stop updating it. See you next time! Hey, hey.